Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Andrew Warren, and today's topic, we're going to be talking about something that I think is very important, and that is, you don't want to make this common mistake when investing in dividend stocks. And before I begin this video, I just want to say that all of this is personal opinion. This is not to be considered financial advice or anything like that, but I'm simply giving my thoughts and opinions on the topic. And I'm hoping that for you viewers out there, you can interpret these thoughts and form your own opinion based off of my opinion, but this is not financial advice. I simply want to share something with you all that may be helpful, but we're basically going to be talking about the number one mistake that dividend investors commonly make. And I'm not going to act very high and mighty here because it's very easy to make this mistake. I've seen a lot of big investors even make this mistake. And by the way, I interpret this as a mistake. To other people, it may not be. But this is simply what I interpret it as and how I view investing in terms of dividend stocks. So basically what I'm talking about here is a lot of people tend to chase a high dividend yield stock over a better growth stock with maybe less of a dividend. So let me give you guys one good example right here. Let's look at Macy's. As you can see, the dividend yield is extremely high. It's 25.08. So the dividend yield is amazing for this. However, let's check at the past five years and see how well this stock has performed. As you can see, over the past five years, if you exclude the latest dip, which basically every stock is taking, let's look at the peak. This would be considered basically the peak, February 14th. The stock is down 73% in the past five years. And although you're going to get some amazing dividends off of this stock, you have to really think, is this worth investing if your actual value, your share value of the stock is going to go down 74% or $47? If you look at the history of Macy's, you get a 37 cents dividend, at least that was as of 312. And around the range of that 312 date, let's just say it's $17 for a share. So you're getting 37 cents, 38 cents per 17 or $18 share, which is actually really good. But the common thing with many dividend investors is that they'll chase that super high dividend yield, but that core value of their stock, their share price is declining a lot. So although that extra 37 cents is nice, you have to take a look at the bigger picture of things and realize that this stock is not even growing. The way I decide on whether I should purchase a dividend stock is mostly based on this criteria, and that is, I want the dividend stock to have a growth rate of at least 50% over the past five years, excluding like a recent crash or something like that that we've seen lately. And if it does qualify for that 50% growth rate over the past five years, basically I'm just looking for at least 10% a year, then I'll accept basically any dividend that it does give me, just because that dividend is nice, but I'm also getting that core growth that is absolutely absolutely necessary, at least with the way I view investing, because it's very easy to get a 10% growth. Let me just show you guys what I'm talking about here. You get almost a guaranteed dividend. Now, I won't say guaranteed, but I think it's very unlikely that like with the index mirroring ETFs that they're going to revoke the dividend or suspend the dividend. And with these, you get pretty much an average of 10% a year. And if you exclude the latest drop, which is happening across all stocks right now, it was up 63% at its peak, but we'll just say 10% a year. So that's my logic with things. And you actually get a pretty good dividend for this one. As you can see, the dividend yield is 2.51. And I think I got like a dollar per quarter, which is actually really nice. But I was paying a much higher price for the dividend. Let me check. I think it, December was when I started buying a lot of these so i paid like 280 dollars 290 some dollars in december but right here is one of the main reasons why i have this criteria because it's very very easy to get that 10 percent gain every year plus a pretty nice dividend yield as well so when i'm looking at other stocks such as macy's and i'm seeing that it's just decreasing in share price and i can't even get a positive percentage over the past five years and although that dividend yield is nice it's really just not worth my time and not worth my money if i can't count on this stock long term. So the common mistake that people do is chase after a high dividend yield while letting their core share value decrease over time and willing to let that happen just because of the short-term gains that you'll get from a decent dividend for owning that stock. 
And another thing to note is, guys, a lot of these stocks with the really high dividend yields are taking big drops lately with the recent crash and recession or whatever you want to call it. And many of these companies that already haven't been performing well over the past five years are actually suspending their dividends. Macy's has already suspended their dividends. So the whole reason that you bought this stock for, that dividend yield, is now gone. And now you're left with a vastly underperforming stock with no dividend yield whatsoever. Now let's go ahead and check out Ford. Ford has a pretty high dividend yield, 13.86. Now let's look at the past five years of performance. Once again, we're seeing a consistency in it not performing well. If you look at its peak recently, it was still down 39%. And I think a lot of people that bought this stock were just chasing a dividend. But like I said, you have to look at it long term. You're going to end up losing so much more money than what you'll gain in dividends if it's not gaining over the years. And also, Ford actually just suspended its dividend recently as well. Here's another one, Wynn Resorts. And I know a lot of people actually like this one as well. And I will say it's been performing much better than some of the other stocks recently. At least it's a little bit positive. So that's pretty solid. But like I said, I would rather just chase something that is very easy like VOO, which is a consistent 50% every five years, 10% every year, plus a nice dividend. And then as you can see with this one as well, with the recent drop, it's dropped even more than a lot of the other stocks have. Now the rebound gains on this will be pretty nice, I believe. But if you're wanting to invest long term with dividend stocks, I think this just isn't the best option because it's not really gaining that 10% every year I'm talking about. However, there could be more potential for this one in the future compared to the other ones like Macy and Ford. Here's another example, Carnival Cruise and excellent dividend yield 16.67 but once again if you look at the past five years even if we look at its peak recently on january 17th it's up 13.92 percent not too bad but it's still not up 10 percent a year or 50 percent every five years which is once again my criteria but basically my logic is it's pretty simple to get a 10 percent safe gain every year plus a nice dividend now it's not guaranteed as you can see with the recent market events but voo is a very good option for those decent dividend yields and a consistent earning every year where you don't have to worry about some of these other stocks like how they do where it declines over the years instead of increasing. GlaxoSmithKline is another example of a decent dividend yield where it's just barely up a few percent over the past five years 4.48 percent so in my opinion a lot of these stocks are not worth investing in if you're chasing a dividend or if you're chasing growth or if you're simply chasing both at the same time which is what I like to do. Personally, I prioritize growth much more than the dividend yield because here's a simple thing, guys, and it's something that a lot of people don't realize. But even if a stock that you invest in does not have a dividend, you can basically give yourself your own dividend. If it's a good growth company and it's grown a lot recently, you could either sell a partial share or even a share if you own a lot of them if you want a good dividend yield, and it does basically the same thing. The only difference is that the company is doing it for you instead of you doing it yourself. So in reality, everything can be a dividend stock if you really want it to be. All you have to do is sell a small partial share or sell even a full share if you do own a lot of them, but you have to be careful with not taking too much out because you still want that compound interest and growth to happen in the future. But if you don't want to deal with that, I'll show you the main dividend stocks that I really like. We've already talked about VOO, but Microsoft is currently my favorite dividend stock. Look at the growth over the past five years compared to the other stocks that I just showed you. Even with the most recent drop, Microsoft is up 229%. Now, if you factor it in at its peak, it's up 346%, and the dividend yield is 1.49, and I recently just got paid a dividend, which it was 51 cents per share, I believe. So, although the dividend yield is not absolutely crazy, 51 cents per share is still pretty nice, and this growth rate is absolutely insane. And if we go back to what I was discussing earlier, when you have excellent growth rates like this, you can afford to sell a tiny partial share of your stock if you do need a dividend or do prefer a dividend to just motivate you to keep investing that way. One downside to mention though, if you do use Robinhood, fractional shares are not currently available unless you have early access, but with a lot of other brokers, you have access to fractional shares, so you can easily sell off a partial share and get that small dividend that you're looking for. But regardless of even doing that, 51 cents per share is still pretty excellent. And personally, I can easily accept a lower dividend if the growth rate for that share value is as good as what we're seeing right here. Now let's check out Apple. It's pretty similar in that regard. As you can see, the dividend yield is a little bit lower, I think. It's 1.34. 
But if you look at its past five years, and even with a recent drop, it is still qualified for that criteria I was talking about earlier. It's over 50% growth for the past five years, 10% a year basically, and it has a dividend yield. So it qualifies for both of what I'm looking for here. And if you exclude the recent drop, it's up 162%, which is excellent. So as you can see, that once again qualifies for what I'm talking about here. I personally just think that a lot of people make that common mistake when investing into stocks just because of a high High dividend yield when in reality they can't really count on that stock to grow long term you're really missing out by not investing in a lot of other stocks that do that much better Anyways, I just wanted to share this video with you all and wanted to help out some fellow dividend investors. I think dividends are an excellent way to keep people investing that are normally people that probably wouldn't invest if it weren't for that incentive. But it's just important to consider that many of these companies that people are investing in for that high dividend yield, although they are chasing good dividends, that share price is likely to not improve over time compared to something that is very simple to get what you're looking for like VOO if you want it to be super easy. In addition to this, a lot of companies will cut their dividends in situations like this with a recent crash like Ford, Macy's, and a lot of others. So if you think about it, the main reason that people commonly invest in dividend stocks is so that they get rewarded in a time of a crash or a time that's discouraging in the market and they'll get those dividends and still be happy and stay in the investment. So if you really think about it, that means those shares aren't really worth investing in in the first place if they're going to cut those dividends in hard times. So that's why it's so important to invest in stocks that are very consistent with their dividend history and growth. This is one of the main reasons I invest in VOO, Microsoft, Apple, and then Tesla is just a nice little disruptor stock that I'm really interested to see what happens with it in the future. But anyways, I just wanted to share this with you all and hopefully help you out as I know it's very easy to fall into the trap of chasing that extra dividend yield. And by the way, if you're just a beginner and checking out stocks and doing research right now and plan to begin investing or dividend investing in the future, I personally believe that now is such an excellent time to start because you're starting in a dip whereas a lot of other people don't have this opportunity for example if you look at this dip we're at such a low point on march 22nd and it hasn't been that low since october 18th so it's almost a way of rewinding to a previous stock price six months ago which is pretty awesome so this is a great opportunity for beginner investors to get stocks at a great value and at a fire sale Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please feel free to drop a like on it. It really does help me out, and it shows me that you guys love these dividend videos, these informational videos, portfolio updates, market predictions, and all of the things along those lines. I really do appreciate all of the love lately, and I'm so excited that we already have 374 subscribers. I just thought that this video would maybe help some of you all out, but anyways, I really appreciate you all watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your week.